Welcome to Xara template tutorial lesson number 55. In this Xara Web Designer 7 premium tutorial, we're going to be going over how to make a mouse over state that slides in objects onto your screen. And we're going to also briefly talk about the fade in effect and also the instant effect. But we're not going to actually go into any um, samples or tutorials of them. We're just going to briefly tell you about uh, what those effects do. But for this tutorial, uh, we will primarily focus on showing you how to use the slide in effect. And before you get started, um, I'm going to actually show you an example. And if you like what you see, you can go ahead and continue to follow with this tutorial. However, go ahead and still start a blank new document in XR Web Designer 7 Premium if you haven't already. And after you uh, go ahead and start your blank new document, go ahead and open up your web browser. And, and go to your your address bar so I'm gonna go to my web browser which is Firefox and then in my address bar I'm gonna go to our website so type in www.xartemplate.com and go to our website and once you get to our website what you're gonna to want to do is scroll down and you're gonna click on this box that says buy templates right above it and when you click on this box that has all our little icons of our websites, that's going to take you to our page of website templates. And when you get to that page, you're going to go to page four, which should be the last option here at the time of this video. However, there may be more numbers here um, at a future time. But for right now, we have four pages worth of templates. So you're going to click on number four. So once your page loads, uh, the first template that you should see, and if you don't, you will you can just look for it on our website somewhere, but you should see uh, Web Design Template Draft 3 Writers, which is this template here. And when you see this template or find it on our web page, you're going to click on the option that says View Template here that has our logo, or you can just click on the logo, whichever. And when you left click on that, it'll take you to our draft 3 writers template for websites and you're gonna go under the section that says pick solution which is this first box here and you're gonna place your cursor over any of these icons that look like a play button and when you do that you'll see that it slides in these different menus from the size of your screen you'll see that this bottom one slides it in from the top this one slides it in from the top left right I mean starting from the top left corner as you can see there, it comes in from the top left hand corner. And this one comes from the top again. And this one comes from the left top corner. So hopefully you can see the differences in how these fly into your screen. And these are the slide in menu effects that we're going to create. So if you like what you see, uh, let's go ahead and go back to XAR and continue with this tutorial. So once you have your blank new document, let's go ahead and open up the page and layer gallery by going to the right hand side of your page and once you bring that menu out let's go ahead and lock that panel clicking on the thumbtack and make sure that you have the mouse off state selected and again you'll know that you have that selected by the blue rectangle that's behind it so if you have the mouse off state selected let's go ahead and go to our toolbar and select the rectangle tool now you can select any quick shape that you want but in this case I'm going to select the rectangle tool so I'm going to go ahead and draw a rectangle in my workspace and I'm going to resize that by selecting the select selection tool. You don't have to, um, but in this case, I want to make my rectangle a little bit bigger than what it is. And once you make that rectangle, let's go ahead and give it a different color uh, by selecting one of the colors in our, our color options here. Or you can just open up the color editor in the bottom left hand corner and we can give it a different color. However you want to do that. By now, you should know how to use the color editor. Um, if you don't, uh, you know, make sure that you go back and watch some of our previous tutorials so once you give that a different color uh, let's go ahead and close out the color editor and select our text tool in the toolbar and I'm going to give some text on top of this um, quick shape for the rectangle and I'm going to call it triggering object and I'll explain to you what I mean by that in one moment and I'm going to actually make uh, this text a little bit bigger 
and what it is. I'll probably make it about a 20 pixel size and you don't have to make it to the same proportions. So what do I mean by triggering object? What I mean by that is that this object is going to cause an object to slide in to the screen so that when you place your cursor over this rectangle it's going to cause another object to slide into your workspace. So that's why I called it triggering object. So I'll say that one more time. When you place your cursor, your mouse cursor over this rectangle, it's going to cause another object to slide into your workspace. So it's triggering an event and that event is making an object slide into your workspace. So and you'll you'll see what I mean once we look at the preview. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue with this tutorial. The next thing that you want to do is go back to your page and layer gallery and we're going to make a new layer by clicking the option that says new layer in your page and layer gallery. So left click on that and we're going to call this layer slide in and that's where your object is going to slide into. It's going to slide in using this layer. So call it slide in for that layer. And this is the object that we're going to draw that's going to slide into your workspace. So with that layer selected, let's go ahead and go back to our toolbar and select the rectangle tool. And let's draw the rectangle where we want it to end at, the end point. And let's say we want it to end somewhere near this triggering object. And let's give it a different color. Let's go back to the color editor. And let's give it a different color here. I'll make it maybe a light blue or so and that's going to be our slide in rectangle. So let's give it some text. Let's call it uh, slide in object. So this is going to be the object that's going to slide into your your workspace. Okay? And if you look at your page in layer gallery, you'll see that all those objects were created on the slide in layer. And it's important to keep both of those objects on the same layer so that when they slide in, everything is perfect. So once you create that, we've now got everything that we need to go ahead and make a sliding effect. So let's go up ahead and select um, our triggering object, which is this green rectangle. Right click on it, go to web properties, and let's go to the tab that says mouse over. And when you select that, you're going to go to the second drop down menu that says show pop up layer. So left click on that little uh, radio point and then select the drop down menu you're going to choose slide in and by the way you could have named that layer in the page and layers gallery whatever you wanted I just named it slide in um, for the sake of simplicity in this tutorial so this slide in that you're seeing here is just re referencing to that uh, slide in text that we gave to that layer in our page and layer gallery so let's go ahead and select the effect option in this web properties panel and we're going to choose the drop down menu and pick slide in from top and once you set that there is some parameters that you can set and you'll see that it says speed in seconds so you can make this object take a really long time by going closer to five seconds so it goes zero to five or you can go really low and it can make it like maybe one second if you want it to so this slider that I'm adjusting here adjust the speed at which that object slides into your workspace. I'm going to leave it maybe about the, around the third tick mark here. You probably can't see that on the screen because it's really small. But I'm going to leave it around the third tick mark and hit OK. And then we're going to hit OK again because we're done making all our changes. And now let's go to File, Preview Website. And let's place our cursor over this triggering object and watch what happens you see that it slides in the sliding object so this triggering object which is this green rectangle triggers an event that causes the sliding object to come on screen and it slides in from top just like we selected in the mouse over properties so that's how you create a sliding effect now let's go ahead and go back to our, our workspace and close this window out now let's say maybe you don't want it to slide in you know right next to this green object and I apologize if my voice sounds a little crackly uh, it is a little bit messed up right now so I do apologize for that but um, let me go ahead and continue with this tutorial uh, let's say that you want it to slide in further away 
Well, all you would do is, you know, select, I mean, left click and drag over the area that you want to select. And you'll see that there's a red rectangle that's emphasizing the area that we're selecting. So if you select both of those objects, you can left click and drag it into the direction that you want. If you go to File, Preview Website, and you place your cursor over the triggering object, it now slides further away from the triggering object. And let's, let's say that you want to have it actually go right above your triggering object. So let's move it right above your triggering object. And if we go to File, Preview Website, and place our cursor over the triggering object, you now see that it slides right on top of that triggering object. So depending on where you position that slide in object in your workspace, that's where it's going to slide in when you go preview it, preview it on your website. So let's go ahead and try some different effects. Let's select our triggering object again and then right click and I'm going to actually move these objects up some so that you can see that menu when I bring it up. Right click on the triggering object, go to web properties and then go to the mouse over tab and click on effect again but this time let's choose slide in from the left hit OK, hit OK again, and go to File, Preview, Website. If you place your cursor over it, you see that that object now slides in from the left. So that's pretty unique. And just like with the other sliding effect, depending on where you place that object, that's where it's going to slide in into your workspace. And you'll notice that this one doesn't slide all the way from the complete edge, but it slides in um, from a certain standpoint and don't don't worry about that I mean just just know that depending on where you place your object that's where it's going to slide into your workspace so you can disregard that last statement that I said that it sounded a little bit like gibberish as long as you understand the main concept that's what's important um, if at a later date you need more help I can assist you but in general that's how you make uh, slide in objects I think you get the general idea now um, Originally, I wasn't going to show you how to use the fading effect, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you. I think that this tutorial won't be too long if I show you that. So let's go ahead and go to Web Properties again after you right click on the triggering object. And let's go to Mouse Over. And this time, let's click on Effect again. And we're going to choose Fade. So that's going to make it fade that object in rather than slide in. So click OK. Click OK again. And let's go to File, Preview Website. And this time I'm actually going to click on my web browser icon because it doesn't always show the fading effect that the best uh, when I'm viewing it within Xara. So I like to show it in the in the actual web browser. So let's click on our web browser, whichever yours you prefer. And when it shows that object in your web browser, and you place your cursor over it, you'll see that it fades in your slide in object rather than sliding it in. So it's pretty cool. You know, I think you'll you'll like using this effect and it'll add some interactivity to your website. So let's go ahead and go back to our workspace in XR and close out our preview window. And let's right click on the triggering object again, go to web properties, and this time let's go to the mouse over state again for the mouse over tab, choose effect, and this time we're gonna choose instant and click OK, hit apply. Well, we should have just hit OK. doesn't matter. Hit File, Preview Website, and watch what happens when you place your cursor over the triggering object. It appears immediately. There is no fade in. It's just an instant pop on. And even if you view it in your web browser, you'll see that the same thing happens. It's instant on, instant off, instant on, instant off. So it doesn't slide in. It just appears instantly. So there's a few different ways that you can make objects um, appear on your screen that are hidden. So that's a, a good overview, I think. And I think you have a strong understanding that um, will take you really far in using the slide in effect, the fade in effect, and also using the uh, instant effect. So that's a brief overview of that. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to shoot me a message on YouTube. If you'd like to see me create future tutorials, uh, send me a send me a message on what area you need help with learning the Xara software, 
and I will do my best to assist you. If you enjoy this tutorial, please give us a thumbs up, share our video, embed our video, favorite our video. Any way that you can help promote our video, we will, well, uh, we, we will definitely appreciate it. So um, definitely feel free to embed and share our video and give us thumbs up. Thanks again for viewing this tutorial and have a great day.